this is Zach from Board with Friends, and today I am really excited because we're going to be learning how to play Animal Kingdoms from Galactic Raptor Games. This is an area control game for one to five players, and it's designed by Steve Aramini, and it goes about 45 minutes. Now, Galactic Raptor Games is a combination of Weird Giraffe games and Liedemann games, so they have a good pedigree. Um, they'll be putting this out on Kickstarter on January 8th, so today we are going to go over how to play this game, and if you like it, please go ahead and go on Kickstarter and show them their support. Um, the designer, Steve Aramini, if you want to learn more about him, uh, you can head over to our podcast and listen to our interview with him and you know learn about more of the development of this game. All right, um, but for now, forget about all that other nonsense. Let's just crack this open and see how it plays. Now, these are all the components that come with Animal Kingdoms. We got everything from our little wooden influence tokens here. Uh, always fun to have those in the game. We got our score trackers. Everybody's going to have their own color. Um, the colors are not final. Obviously, these are, I want to say, these are uh, prototype components, uh, definitely, especially the board here. I mean, this is just paper. Uh, the final product will have a folding board. It will have a you know nice thick score tracker board that you can use. Uh, but for now, this gives you the general gist of the game. Um, you got your deck of cards here with, I have to say, this gorgeous artwork on it. I mean, these are really fun. Um, to just look at just super pretty and lots of variety of animals on here uh, we'll get these out of the way you got your scoring tokens which we'll go over in a minute when we do setup we got our age tokens here or uh, first to withdraw tokens I should say they help keep track of the ages that you're in and then finally we have our decree cards which are going to determine how we play the game and also make it as fun as it is because spoilers this is fun so to set it up first of all you would put out your board right in the middle where everybody can see it and have access to it the next thing that you're going to do is take these scoring tokens here and just kind of mix them all up and you want to place along the board here where it says ak which happens to stand for animal kingdom i figured it out eventually um, we're going to put random score tokens down. You don't get to see what they are. And this changes every single game. And you're going to put three in each of these realms. And we'll go over how to interact with the realms once I show you how to set it up. So we put these store, score tokens out. And then you're just going to flip them over at that point. And then you're going to put them in ascending order. So the lowest first... This is a 7, that's a 9, and this represents each age, because the game will be played across three ages. More details on that later. And we got the 5, and a 7, and an 8, and so on. So you would do that all the way around the board, and so that each age, that's what you're vying for to score. Next, you're going to take these decree cards, and you'd shuffle them all up, and you're going to put one decree card out at each of these realms. And what these do is determine how you can play cards in each realm. So we got that out there. Finally, each uh, player is going to choose a color. I always choose yellow because yellow is the best color, except when uh, I'm fighting for it with uh, my sister-in-law. And uh, this is your scoring token. You're going to put that over by the scoreboard. And then every player is going to be dealt out four cards. One. So if I were playing a three-player game, we'll just deal these out randomly. Oh, and the one last thing is you're going to take these um, first to withdraw tokens. There's four of them. You're also going to mix those up. And you're going to cut one out randomly without looking at it. Put that back in the box. And at the end of each age, um, one person's going to randomly take one of these tokens. And that's just going to award bonus points at the end of the game. Like we have a 2, we have a 4, we have a 3, and I believe the fourth one is a 5. Just like that. So you never know what these are going to be, but these can definitely turn the tide at the end of the game. And that's it. We're all set up. So let's learn how to play this thing.
All right, we are all set up to play Animal Kingdoms. Now, I have this set up with a three-player game, which there's really no difference in the actual setup on the board. Um, I just happen to have three players set up. So myself, we'll say Vanessa and Sean. Um, now, in Animal Kingdoms, on your turn, you can perform any of three actions. Um, you can claim a territory, you can rally, and you can withdraw. Now, normally you would not want to withdraw right away because then you're done for the age. This is played across three ages. Um, that's why there are three scoring markers on each of these little realms. Um, if you, as you are going around in the game, you're placing your influence tokens on each of these realms. You'll notice these little pips and stuff on here. Um, if at any point you fill this up, you have majority, congratulations. You're going to win um, in that realm. And that's what you're trying to do. These score markers are always going to be random. And they are, you know, you're going to want to think ahead. Because as they start small, like this one here is 5. In the second age, it'll be worth 7 points. In the third age, it'll be worth 9. So this could be pretty lucrative, you know, later on in the game. Even though 5 isn't a lot of points right now. Same thing over here in this realm. Um, it's 6, 7, and then 10. Which is going to be really enticing later on in the game. I know several of my plays of this. I've gotten into that trap where I really want that 10. Uh, turns out, probably shouldn't have gone for it because other people reaped up points later. So there's a lot of strategy and decision in where you want to put your influence tokens. So the start player is determined by who last saw an animal in the wild. Um, so your dog sitting on the couch and ignoring you while you film internet videos doesn't count. Um, <laughs> but you can, uh, you know, however you want to do that, start player app, doesn't really matter. Um, but it's a fun way to uh, figure out who goes first. So the different actions you can do like we talked about. The first thing you would do is you can claim a territory. So how do you do that? So you're going to look at your starting hand of cards. Like I said, awesome artwork on these things. And then you want to look at the different realms that are on the board. You have these decrees here which tell you the rules in which you can place cards on them. So like this rule here, I'll look at this first one because it's the closest, um, it says plus or minus one, which means as soon as someone plays a card on here, so if I decide to play this seven, now I've claimed one piece of the territory of this realm. Now, if Vanessa were to go first, oh, first I would draw back up to four because you always draw back up after you play a card. Now it's Vanessa's turn. Vanessa's going to look at her cards, and if she wanted to play here, she has to do plus or minus whatever was previously placed, whatever is the current um, animal card on there. But she has a six in a red panda. So adorable. Um, she can place that because it is plus or minus one of seven. So now she has influence in this realm. And it's just going to go back and forth like that. Um, you don't have to keep playing in the same realm that other people have done. You can go all over the board. So let's look at another decree. If we take a look at this one, it says, Any other kingdom's rank. And you notice this one is a special card because it's got the two arrows on it, which helps you remember any other kingdom, not just the ones to the side, all of the board. So right now, there is only one other kingdom with a card on it. So you have to go by this kingdom's rank. So if Sean, on his turn wanted to play a card, he would have to have a six if he wants to play in this kingdom. I keep saying realm, my apologies. Um, if we look at this, he happens to have a six in the owl. So he can place here and get some influence there. And then he would draw back up to four. And then if we look at this one here, here's another example. This one just, it basically lists off the different beasts. You could do the owls, which are purple, uh, the lizards is green, the wolves in white, or the okapi. Um, we put these down here, and it's my turn again. Do, 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 do. So I have an okapi here, um, and I can say, you know what? I want to play the long game. I want to get to that 10. I'm going to fall for it again, and I'm going to play something there. So I will place an Okapi over here, and I'll get some influence. And this is just going to go keep going back and forth, back and forth, um, each player playing a card or, you know, not. The other option I could do, if I didn't have the ability to play a card, or if I just wanted to get rid of some cards because I, wanted to, I didn't have a card that I could play in a realm that I really wanted to get some influence in, I can rally. So I can take some of my cards, or all of them, and I can say, I'm going to rally. 
and I will discard any number of cards I want. And then I'm going to draw back up those cards. Great, right? Well, the other bonus to rallying is that you get a point when you do that. Because you're really, it's kind of a sacrifice. You're not playing any cards to get more influence. So I will move up and score a point because I decided to rally. Now it goes back to Vanessa. And she says, oh man, I got all these cards here. Um, no one, I don't have a four or a five. I can't play there. But what do we have here? Alternating even and odd. First card may be even or odd and odd, and then you can alternate thereafter. Great. So she can play whatever she wants here because nobody's done it. And she's going to play another Okapi over here because there should be more Okapis in the world. And then we pop that down there. And now it would be Sean's turn again. And like I said, this would go back and forth, back and forth. Once we have reached the end of the influence spots on the board, we have here the uh, capital city um, spots. Any time during your turn, you can choose to withdraw, which means you're just done. You put your cards down, you're out. If you withdraw, are the first to withdraw in the game, like I said, you take one of these tokens here. However, if you place a token into one of these capitals, you're also going to be forced to withdraw. You're done. You don't get to keep placing them in capitals. The advantage to placing one in a capital here is that at the end of the age, normally you would take back all your tokens and you're done. You get to use them in the next age. Any token that's in the capital space is going to graduate into these council spaces, which means they carry over into the next age. So you automatically start with influence in that kingdom. That is a huge strategic uh, thing to look at because it's going to help you, you know, maintain influence, especially when you get to these higher numbers here, like the tens and the nines. So you want to think about that when you're placing your influence tokens. That last one that you put in, that's going to be the most important one. So let's say we've all got our influence going on here. Um, we'll do some uh, video magic right now and fi finish that up. Magical, right? So now we've all placed our influence tokens. The end of the age has occurred because everybody has withdrawn at this point. Um, I was the first to withdraw, so I took one of these point tokens here, the first to withdraw tokens, and that'll be bonuses later. I don't get to look at it. So now we have to score this age. You start with the smallest kingdom, which is the blue one. And right off the bat, Vanessa and I had been, you know, duking it out, trying to get, you know, some uh, supremacy in the kingdom. And if you look at it, we're tied. So that is actually going to result in a battle. And battles are done very simply. Basically, you take your cards in your hand, look at what you got, and you're going to determine um, what is the best rank to play. You're going to pick a card and you're going to each simultaneously hold it out. And let's see what Vanessa has. So we would simultaneously hold it out and reveal. And Vanessa played a 7 and I played a 4. So she wins. And what that means is she's going to get the, um, the full points for the turn. So she'll get 5 points for that. And me, being second place in that, uh, now because I've been bumped down, I will get three points for that. If Sean had a token here, which would not result in a uh, you know battle in this case, because there's only four spots, uh, but if there was a third place person, they would get one point uh, for doing that. If, for some reason, a battle in a multi uh, more than three player game would occur, it would actually bump someone down, they'd get no points um, when that happens if there was a tie and someone get bumped down to fourth. So Vanessa's gonna get five points. She'll move up her token on the tracker and these cards, the loser, me in this case, um, I have to get, I discard this card, but I get to draw back up. The winner of the battle does not get to draw back up because there might be battles later on in the board and that's a way to kind of, uh, you know, mitigate that uh, little issue. So now we move on to the next kingdom. And over here, I have majority. Um, but nobody is in this... Oh, over here also, because Vanessa placed her final token in this kingdom, she gets to move this forward to the console, and I get my tokens back, and she gets her other token back. So in the second age, she's actually going to um, have more influence in this spot, so we got to watch out for that. 
So now we move on to this kingdom. I have majority, so I would get the points on that and move up on the track five. Vanessa, being in second place, gets another three. And we just move on to the next one. In this case, Sean, he playing the green, um, he has majority in this area, so he's actually going to get five. And just randomly, this ended up being five, five, and five, by the way. Um, so we uh, move on, and everybody gets their tokens back. And Sean had chosen to place his final token in this kingdom. Um, so he's going to move up and graduate into the console. And now we look over on the final kingdom here. I have majority, so I'm going to get six points for that. Thank you very much. And now these two are both tied so for second place. So what happens in that circumstance is they both get three points. And they get their tokens back. And I cleverly chose to put my final token in this spot, and I'm going to graduate to this council. Because remember that 10's there, and I want that at the end of the game. Now we're going to move on to the final one, and another battle is going to occur. Because Sean and Vanessa are both tied here. So we're going to look at their cards. Now Vanessa is depleted by one because she won her other battle. Sean still has four cards. So we're going to determine what happens here. This is Sean's card, this is Vanessa's card, and flip it over. Now, normally, Sean would win. He played an 8. However, um, in this game, the only card that can defeat an 8 happens to be a 1. Vanessa played the 1, so she actually wins the battle. Um, every card, you know, if it's the higher card, it wins. The only card that can beat an 8 is 1. Think of it like a circle, all right? Or the ace beating a king, all right? And Vanessa would take six points for that. She had a good round. And Sean would take three points for losing. Now that the round is over, or the age is over, all the tokens are going to go back, except for the ones who have graduated to the council status. Everybody gets their stuff back. And then we move on. We're going to take these decrees, and you're going to discard them. And this is how you set up for the second age. You just discard those, and you're going to take three more, sorry, not three, five more decrees and put them out for the next age. Everybody draws back up to four cards, and then you just continue playing. And you're going to do that for two more rounds. At the end of the final round, um, once everything is all said and done, and all the points are scored up from the different um, you know control that you have in the area, the last thing you're going to do is you're going to reveal who got these first two withdraw tokens and add in the bonus points. And then the person with the most points wins. It's a very easy game, uh, Animal Kingdoms. Easy to learn, I should say. Uh, but there's a lot of strategy in where you want to play your cards and how you can try to block opponents from, you know, getting majorities in the different areas. You want to think about, okay, do I really want to invest some of my cards in this area to stop someone from getting this 10? Or do I want to try to diversify and get influence in all the areas so that I get a bunch of smaller amounts of points? Because those two, uh, threes and ones can add up. Also, do I want to try to um, do a couple of uh, withdraw not withdrawals, um, oh, the terminologies. Do I want to try to rally a little bit and get a few extra points during the game? But when I rally, I am sacrificing putting out my influence tokens. But if my opponents have withdrawn already, I can't rally. You're not allowed to do that once someone has withdrawn. But once other people have withdrawn, I have more turns available to me after they're out of the round, out of the age, so I could put more influence tokens out. But am I already boxed out? Do I even have the cards? There's so much stuff to think about in this game. Um, we've been finding, because it plays so fast, you just want to play another game afterwards. Okay, let's go again, let's go again, let's go again. So, honestly, it, it's a lot of fun. I suggest this to uh, everybody to at least check out the Kickstarter on January 8th. If you really enjoyed it, um, go on there and it, 
if you enjoyed this video, I should say, go on the Kickstarter uh, and uh, show Galactic Raptor Games some love because I, I promise you this will be something that you want to keep in your collection. It's great to for casual players to take a look at. All right. So like I always say, do like the cool kids do, like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, check out that Kickstarter, January 8th, Galactic Raptor Games, Animal Kingdoms by Steve Aramini.